Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House again, and today we're gonna do a part two of last week's video. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Wi-Fi camera outdoors. Typically with an outdoor camera, uh, if you have power close enough to where you're running your camera, you can plug it in, use the, the built-in adapters and do a little bit of waterproofing to them. But on today's video, I'm gonna specifically show you how to work with power over ethernet and even doing power over ethernet for a camera that doesn't necessarily support power over ethernet. So on today's video, I'm gonna focus on how to set up one of these outdoor cameras and powering it using a PoE or power over ethernet setup. Now, some of the more expensive cameras like Unify and Meraki both support power over ethernet natively. And what this means is you can use a single ethernet cable plugged into the appropriate type of switch to be able to get power put to the camera without having to run an additional 120 volt connection close to it. Say you have a power outlet that's close to your camera installation location, you can use that, but one of the things to be aware of is what's called voltage drop. So say you have a 12 volt adapter that you're using and you wanna extend that line, well every inch or every foot of that line adds additional resistance to the line, which drops the available voltage. Sometimes it can drop it to the below the required voltage for your particular camera. Now, quick and easy solution to that is power over ethernet injectors and, and adapters. So in this case, this is an, actually quite an old set of power over ethernet um, adapters that I have that I've been using at a cam for a camera outdoors for quite a while. I'm gonna repurpose these for today's video and then set up that new EasyViz camera that I got last week. So we're gonna go ahead and install it where I had an existing camera, but I'm gonna take you through all of the hows and the whys to be able to use power over ethernet for your camera. So first I'll start off and talk about what is power over ethernet. Power over ethernet or PoE is a standard that was established by the IEEE to be able to power devices at the other end of an eight conductor unshielded twisted pair cable. So you won't need to run additional power to whatever the device is. Now this is most commonly found in things like access points, phones, cameras, and actually there are switches that can be powered over ethernet as well. This is great for if you have a remote device somewhere where you won't have 120 volt power or 240 if it's in your particular country available where the device needs to be, especially for outdoor devices like access points and cameras. So this is great for our particular application that we're gonna talk about today. What makes power of ethernet so significant in its advantage? Well, it actually transmits at a higher voltage. So even if you do get a slight voltage drop, the adapter that's on the other end can compensate for that and then still output that 12 volts that you need for your camera. So it's super handy when you're making large runs of a connection where if you put 100 feet on the end of one of those, the adapter that comes with your camera, it's not gonna work. If you do that with power over ethernet, it works just fine. So there are length restrictions with power over ethernet. Um, it depends on your adapter and also the type of cable that you're running with, but typically it's about 100 feet is the rule of thumb that you use when you're running power over ethernet. There's a couple of tips I'll show you here in a little bit on how to ma make sure that the power over ethernet is gonna work for your particular application before you run it and climb up on a ladder. So I've actually got links to some power over ethernet adapters that you can use. Uh, in a, a few videos ago when I talked about the WISE version three cameras, I talked about there being a special power over ethernet adapter that can be used for any type of uh, micro USB connected device, similar to the WISE cameras. On today's video, we're gonna be using actually one that converts to a 12 volt barrel jack connection that's most commonly used in cameras. So I'm gonna link some examples in the description below in a kit um, that you can grab off of Amazon. You might wanna double check to make sure that the, the barrel jack will fit for your particular camera, or if you happen to have a camera that, that does not use 12 volts, that use something else, make sure to check that before you get started. You can check that by taking the power adapter that came with your camera, flipping over the back, and you can read the voltage right on there. So there are two parts to a power over ethernet pair. There's the injector. So if you happen to have a power over ethernet switch, it already has the injector built into it and it will output a particular voltage that's available to the devices that connect to that particular port. In my case, I don't have a power over ethernet switch near where my camera is gonna be installed. So in this case, I'm gonna be using an injector. Now this injector has two ports on the back of it. One of them being the input, which can take an ethernet connection in, and this is actually only a 10100 connection um, in on this side, and then an output, which actually also has an RJ45 connection on it, but this outputs both the data and the power of ethernet signal that can run to your camera. On the other side, we have the adapter. Now, this is just a generic adapter or splitter, they call it, that will take the, what, what you're doing here, but it'll split it into 12 volt barrel jack and then into a 10100 ethernet connection. So you can plug this into the back of the camera if your camera happens to be equipped with ethernet, like the EasyViz camera was from last week. 
I want to review one more, one more quick thing, and that's the, the cable type that you need to be using. You can't just grab any Ethernet cable and stick it outside and expect it to work for any length of time. They do make special outdoor or burial grade rated cable that can be used in an outdoor setting. So in my case, I went to Home Depot and I grabbed an outdoor rated cable, which has a special UV resistant jacket. You may even find some of them have a bit of that goop on the inside that protects the inner conductors from solar damage. This is super important because if you leave, a cam if you leave one of those cables out for any period of time, the sun's radiation is gonna break down the outside of the jacket. It's gonna expose those inner conductors and that will reduce the life of the cable. Make sure you're using an outdoor rated or direct burial rated cable that can be used in an outdoor environment. That'll make sure your camera stays up for a long period of time. And if you're looking for some examples of some outdoor rated cables, I've got links in the description and in the blog post for this particular video. On today's video, I'm not gonna go over how to terminate a ethernet cable, but that's actually coming up in a future video. All right, so the last step before we actually get this camera installed is we wanna make sure we test our setup before we climb up on, a, up on a ladder and spend a bunch of time messing around. So there are three things that I'm gonna recommend that you test before you, you get up on that ladder. The first thing that we're gonna test is to make sure that our power over ethernet adapters are gonna work for our camera. So go just grab any length of a ethernet cable, connect it up, plug in your camera, and make sure it powers up and functions as you expect it to. This will make sure that there's not some sort of weird issue with your power ethernet adapters or that your camera isn't compatible. The second thing we're gonna check is cable length. So if you've already purchased your cable, you can go ahead and terminate both ends and connect it again through your power ethernet adapters to make sure that your cable length isn't gonna exceed what your adapters can handle. Again, this prevents you from having to climb up on the ladder and find out after you've spent three hours hanging in the camera that it's not gonna work for your particular setup. And the third and final test that I recommend is to take your camera and place it somewhere close by where you're gonna actually install it. So in my case, I've connected it to a ladder using a hose clamp, and that way I can tell if there's gonna be sufficient Wi-Fi signal up there. And I have noticed an issue where that camera is currently placed, it does detect a low signal. I can still use the camera, but I need to improve the Wi-Fi signal there or utilize the ethernet portion of the power of ethernet. All right, with all that done, let's go ahead and get the camera installed. All right, before I can mount the new camera, I had to go ahead and climb up and grab the old camera off the side of the house. But first I had to take out the cabling, including the original PoE adapter from this NEMA enclosure that I had on the side of the house. Then I had to move around to the front side to get the camera actually taken down. Of course, this FOSS cam has a completely different mounting system than the new camera does. Now, I run my cable through this conduit that runs on the outside of my house that runs my sprinkler system. Now, was, this was installed when I moved it into the house, and I just use it to run the Cat5 cable out of the house without having the chance of bugs or water getting in. Now, a neat trick if you're trying to screw a camera into the side of your house and it's only you, you can use these really inexpensive spring clamps and they'll hold the camera on as long as you have a thin enough area for it to grip onto. Now, it's always recommended to screw a pilot hole into the wood before you get started. This helps prevent cracking and also makes it much easier to put the screw in later. Now, the first two screws were obviously the easiest. Of course, the back side is always going to be the more difficult one, especially when you're hanging off of a ladder. Luckily, I have one of these clever little magnetic holders for screws, which makes this much easier. Now, I discovered that my cable wouldn't reach the old location for the NEMA enclosure, so I went ahead and decided to remove it and move it under the eave on the other side, closer to the camera. Now, anytime you have to hang something upside down is always a challenge, so again, drilling a pilot hole helps and then being able to hold it up. Once the enclosure is mounted, now it's time to do a test fit and then get the cable ran. All right, so you'll notice that I'm in a different shirt and the sun's in a different position and that's because when I went to go grab my cabling kit, I discovered that the last person to let borrow it had either used up all of my RJ45 ends or forgot to put them back in the kit. So I had to go run and grab some more RJ45 ends. And so now, today, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the installation of the camera. So we've already got the camera installed, we've got the NEMA enclosure installed, and now all that's left is to terminate the cables and get the power connected up to the camera. So let's get started. 
So if you can avoid it at all costs, try to make sure you have a long service loop on your cabling because you don't want to be climbing up that ladder every time you want to make a, you need to return at the end of the cable. So try to make sure you leave a long service loop. You can always tuck this along your downspout if you need to, if you happen to use a downspout. So I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly terminate this cable with an RJ45 end, and then I'll go ahead and plug it into the camera. It's funny, every time I wanna record a video outside, everybody starts mowing their lawn. And while we're at it, I'll go ahead and terminate the inside cable. Again, you wanna make sure you give yourself a couple, couple feet of service loop. Um, I decided not to run mine up the inside conduit all the way, so it's already inside the building. So now both ends of the cable are terminated. Let's go and plug it into the power of ethernet adapter, make sure everything looks good. So as you can see, the waterproofing kit didn't exactly fit over the power over ethernet adapter, so I just went ahead and installed it with it on there. It's not doing anything, but it's inside of an enclosure, so it doesn't really matter. But once everything was plugged in, I waited around, and now you can see the dome itself starts moving, so we know power has been applied, and everything is functioning as expected. All right, after a quick application of some electrical tape to close that extra hole, then we went ahead and crammed everything into the enclosure and sealed it up, making sure we keep the cables neat coming out of the box itself. Then after screwing the enclosure back together again, I went ahead and made sure that we applied some cable management to make sure the cables stay neat and tidy and don't move around in the wind. Then they went and tucked the rest of the service loop into the downspout. All right, so there we go. The camera's now connected and we have it securely mounted. We've tied it, tightened up all the cables. The install looks pretty good. And now the only thing left is really just to bury the last little bit of cable that I have sticking out of the side of the house, but I'll do that one later. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any specific questions on power over ethernet, cameras, cabling, any of those sort of things, please let me know in the comments below or feel free to join us on a Discord server. Have a great rest of your week.